all the kind of details that we can chew over now uh, with the Shadow Chancellor, Labour's Rachel Reeves. A very good morning to good you. Morning. Thanks for coming in. So what did you make of it? I think there's two key things that I would have done differently and approached differently uh, yesterday. The first is around fair taxes, and you've just set out some of the uh, tax changes uh, yesterday, but some of the things that weren't in there, for example, the non-DOM tax data still exists. Uh, if we close that loophole, that would bring people in to pay tax. If you make Britain your home, you should pay your taxes here. It could bring in more than £3 billion a year. Private equity bosses, their um, income is not taxed at the same rate that ordinary working people's income is, is taxed. That's another loophole that should have been closed yesterday. And instead of just coming time and time again to the ordinary working man and woman asking them to pay more in taxes, I would have liked to see more from those on the broader shoulders. That The second thing that uh, it was really frustrating not to see yesterday was a real plan for economic growth because ultimately that is the way to lift living standards. And despite a lot of the doom and gloom, I'm really ambitious and confident about our country's future. There are industries where we have real strengths from some of the green industries of the future to life sciences, to data and fintech. And there wasn't a plan yesterday to really make the most of our potential as a country. OK, and I'll come on to Labour's yeah, sure. plan in a moment. But, but, but first, you, you talk about your concerns about this, but there's a lot here for you to like, isn't there? I mean, more higher earners are going to be paying more, more tax with those shifting income tax thresholds. Poorer people are largely protected. There's a rise in the living wage, working age benefits rising in line with inflation. There's a lot that Labour should like here, isn't there? I didn't feel like that, I must say. I, I'm really worried about what's going to happen to people's living standards uh, next year. From April, big increases in gas and electricity bills, whilst the windfalls of war being made by the energy giants are still not taxed uh, to the degree that they, they should be. And every pound left on the They've table... they up by 10%. Fine, but there's still those windfalls of, of war that we could be taxing more. We should not be having these investment allowances, uh, which just means that there are some big energy companies that aren't even paying any of this windfall tax. That's not right. And, and so we would have done more on that front uh, to alleviate some of that pressure on the ordinary working person who, you know, at the moment, you, you get your income, it's being eroded by double-digit inflation, and now it's going to be eroded further by these range of stealth taxes that are coming uh, in. And we know that bills are going to go up further next year. So I understand that people feel really anxious about what's happening uh, at the moment. And when you see some of the you know, big companies and the very wealthiest in society you know, getting off scot-free, I, I just don't think that's right. It's not the right priorities. Well, well the Chancellor insists it's the, it's the better off that are suffering the most here. Well, not if you're a non-DOM, not if you're a private equity boss, not if, if you're, you're a, a bank. if you're a earner, he no, would say. But, 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 but the point is that if you're a non-DOM, you're not paying your taxes in Britain. So it doesn't matter whether the rate kicks in at 125 grand or 150 grand. You're not paying it if you're a non-DOM. That is the whole point. Uh, and so we should be closing those loopholes. And again, if you're a private equity boss, you're not paying income tax. You say it's all a capital gain. Uh, and, and that's taxed at a lower rate. So that's why we've got to close some of these loopholes to make our tax system uh, fairer. OK, let's see what Labour would do, shall we? Because the Chancellor has announced tax rises now and spending cuts for later, two years later, when it's possible that Labour would be in power. So would you stick to those spending cuts? Well, first of all, I, I do recognise that because of the mess that the Tories have made, Labour are not going to be able to do everything that we want to do as quickly as possible. And we've set a set of fiscal rules that an incoming Labour government would stick to. But again, there are different choices that could be made. Different choices could have been made yesterday. If the government don't make those choices, those are the sorts of different choices that we would be making around tax, for example, at the next election. I'd also say this, you know, in the last last year, we've had four budgets and four chancellors. By the next election, we may have another four budgets, another eight budgets. Who knows? So I don't know the state of the, um, of, of the fiscal position I'm going to inherit. would you stick to those spending cuts? Well, I, I have said that we've got a set of fiscal rules to balance day-to-day -day spending, to get debt down, uh, and we will set out our, 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 our particular, our specific proposals at the next okay. election. But I do recognise that because of the mess they've made, that does impose constraints on an incoming Labour government but we would make different choices uh, in terms of tax to alleviate some of that pressure on the ordinary working person. And also, we would put in plan our plans to grow the economy because 
ultimately, that is the way to okay. live living standards. But I want to. I want to. I know you can't talk absolute specifics. I want a general idea of what you're going to do as far as the, the spending is concerned. If you. Do you, I mean, do you want more money spent on public services? Well, I've said, for example, on this non-DOM uh, tax, you know, that we would use that money by closing that loophole to invest in the NHS workforce. But how much that, money would that raise? Well, £3.2 billion. Pounds. Yeah, but uh, that's not a huge amount when, you, when the whole budget is £136 billion. The, the government aren't doing it, and that is the whole point. We could use that to double the number of people going to medical training school. I say that's a massive big deal, to increase the number of nurse training places, midwife training places, district nurses. Those are just some of the differences. So even if you've got a, different, a difficult fiscal inheritance, and we know that a Labour government will will have that because of the mess the Tories have made. You can still make different choices. You can prioritise different things. And under Labour, it would be ordinary working people that were prioritised and ensuring that our public services are lifted off of their knees, which is where they are at the moment, and asking those with the broader shoulders to contribute more. If you do want to spend more on public services, a lot of the ideas have already been used by the Chancellor, haven't they, that Labour has talked about in the past, like the windfall tax on energy companies, like higher taxes uh, for higher earners. I mean, you don't have many options left, do you, to raise the money? Well, I've set out some of them, private equity, uh, VAT on private school fees, uh, the non-DOM tax status, uh, a proper windfall tax so that uh, those windfalls of war uh, are used to help people who are really struggling with uh, higher bills and, and higher taxes under the Conservative governments. Those are some of the different choices that we would make now. If the Tories don't make those choices, they're the choices that we would make after the next election with the Labour government. Do you back the fact that Jeremy Hunt has honoured the triple lock on pensions and that will see pensions rise in line with inflation? It is right that the Chancellor uh, increased the uh, pensions and universal credit and disability benefits in line with the rising uh, cost of living. I'm still concerned about what happens next year when energy bills go up to £3,000 on average for, for people and how people are going to cope with that. Um, but uh, I am pleased that those choices were, were, were made because that's caused a huge amount of uncertainty and worry for some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And yet, are you concerned that while pensioners are protected, a lot of uh, workers haven't been? Are you comfortable with that? And if you're not, what kind of pay rises do you want to see the public sector get to, to, to match anything like what pensioners are getting? Well, I, I want to see inflation brought under control, and, and that means bringing back stability to our economy. And our economy has not had that stability with wild volatility in, in, uh, in, in gilt um, prices and yields. OK, but in should, volatility should, so we haven't got very much time, but should public sector workers get anything like pensioners in terms well, I'm of not pay gonna, settlements? I'm not going to pluck numbers out of thin air, but what we do need is the health secretary and other government ministers treating public sector workers with respect, getting down and negotiating. This is the first first time ever that nurses have gone on strike. This should be a badge of shame for this government. They can still avert it if they take those concerns of those who work in our NHS heroes in our country, if they show them the respect and treat them with the dignity that they deserve. OK, Rachel Rees, thanks very much indeed for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you.